welcome to my scientific laboratory, my mad scientist apprentices. I have a very important question for you. When did I go from being a scientist to a mad scientist? Hee hee hee. Either way, I would like to introduce you to my dear friend, Miss Pip. Thank you, mad scientist. Today I will be helping you review the second section of chapter one. First off, scientific inquiry refers to the different ways in which scientists study the natural world and propose explanations based on the evidence they gather. Scientists conduct experiments to learn about the natural world. When a scientist has a question about something, they form a hypothesis. This is a possible explanation for a set of observations or answer to a scientific question. In other words, an educated guess. But some questions, like the one I asked before, when did I go from being a scientist to a mad scientist, can't be answered, because it can't be tested. But if the question was something like, what are the effects of toxic sludge on a turtle, then I might hypothesize, which is a verb for hypothesis, that the sludge might mutate the turtles. Then I could test this hypothesis to find out if it's true. A good scientist might not try this experiment because it would be testing on animals, but I'm a mad scientist. If I were to carry out my experiment with the turtles, I would need to control the variables. Variables are factors that could change and affect the experiment. I would need to use the same sludge for each test. I'd need to use the same amount of sludge also. I would also need to use the same kind of turtles throughout each experiment. To run an experiment, Miss Pip or I would have to change just one variable each time we did the experiment. That would be called the manipulated variable. The factor that changes because of the manipulated variable is called the responding variable. So if I added 10 ounces of sludge to the turtle's tank, that would be the controlled variable. Then I examine the turtle's DNA to see if anything changes. This is the responding variable. No one way to run an experiment is the only way. A good scientist might introduce a sample of the turtle's DNA to a sample of sludge. This way no animal would get hurt during the experiment. On the other hand, I want to pour sludge all over those cute little turtles. Right you are. Mad scientists don't play it safe. Sometimes the results of an experiment will cause more inquiry or make a scientist ask more questions. This is a good thing. Many times one experiment will lead to others. Oftentimes a scientist needs to create a table to keep their experimental data organized. The table helps you collect and record your data. Data is facts, figures, or evidence. So while I've been talking to you, Miss Pip has been setting up and doing the experiment. Miss Pip, what are the results of our experiment? Cowabunga, dude! Oh! Oh! Ow! Oh! Ow! Not in the face! an end to our turtle experiment. Moving on then, I think the turtles were trying to tell us something. They clearly communicated to me that they don't like us very much. Did you know that scientists communicate also? It's amazing! When scientists are communicating, we share ideas and experimental findings through writing and speaking. So, let's communicate. Don't you see, Miss Pip? We are communicating. We are communicating with our mad scientist apprentices. I see. So us talking about our experiment with turtles is communicating. Exactly! But we could also have written a speech or essay about it. But we are not normal scientists. We are mad scientists! So apprentices, we don't have to review communicating because, like I said, this presentation is an example of communicating. So after we discussed communicating, let's talk about scientific theory. An example would be, according to the atomic theory, 
All substances are made up of tiny particles called atoms. So, the actual definition would be a well-tested explanation for a wide range of observations or experimental results. Another example would be... Based on observations of sunsets and sunrises, ancient people theorized that the sun revolves around the Earth. But new evidence suggests that the Earth and all the other planets revolve around the sun instead of vice versa. The last thing we are to discuss is scientific law. Unlike a theory, a scientific law describes an observed pattern in nature without attempting to explain it. You can think of scientific law as a rule of nature. The law of gravity is an example of a scientific law. Well, I have one more thing to say. This whole process was scientific inquiry. First, you develop a hypothesis. Then, you design an experiment. Be sure to identify all the variables. Some variables must be controlled while others are manipulated. Next, you have to collect data while you run the experiment. You can then interpret this data and use it to draw conclusions. The final step is to communicate the results of your experiment. I have one last question for you. Did science drive me mad, or did my madness make me want to be a scientist? With that in thought, farewell. Cheerio.